And embattled Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard is running for re-election. She made the announcement on social media. Village trustees have accused her of financial mismanagement. She is also under federal investigation. Henyard has denied the allegations. allegations, allegations, allegations. <sighs> Watching the Tiffany Henyard drama in Dalton, Illinois, is like watching a train wreck. You know what the outcome is going to be, but you still want to see it. It's literally the saddest story of African-American leadership and mismanagement at the same time. But that's not the only issue. There's a new election looming in 2025, and I'll get to that in a minute. Rewind. Recently, senior trustee Jason House announced his bid for mayor a few months ago. Dalton's controversial mayor Tiffany Henyard will be facing a challenger in next year's election. Today, I'm here to proudly announce my candidacy for mayor of Dalton in February of 2025. Dalton trustee Jason House announcing his intention to run against Henyard in next February's primary election. House has been one of Henyard's sharpest critics, blasting the mayor for her controversial spending and police security detail. Stories first reported by Fox 32 that have resulted in an ongoing FBI investigation. House says the village is a financial mess and voters are anxious for a change in leadership. We've seen all kinds of spending, countless spending on Vegas trips first-class flights, luxury hotels and fine dining all on the taxpayers. We've also seen a million dollars a year of security following around one individual instead of being on the streets where they belong. House is running on a reform ticket with two other trustees, Kiana Belcher and Brittany Norwood, and a former trustee, Edward Steve. They're calling their team Clean House 2025. He's already raising money for his campaign and things are well underway. He's supported by what I consider the Dalton Big Five. And the Dalton Five are trustee elect Edward Steve, city clerk Allison Key, Brittany Norwood, and Kiana Belcher. Most of us believe that Jason House will win, but that's not the issue. Dalton, Illinois is a small village with no more than 25,000 people. In a city like this, which has a history in manufacturing, there's a lot of problems in this city. It's not it's the same problem affecting a lot of Midwestern cities, especially those that are African American dominated. Number one, you don't have enough investors into these cities to create new jobs, and you have a high level of mismanagement. That brought me to this very popular video called Why U.S. Cities Are Going Broke. Today, cities have grown outward so much they can't afford to maintain their basic infrastructure needs, such as paying for roads, sidewalks, water, and sewer infrastructure. This is because of the development pattern that ensued, which bankrupts municipal governments. So what happened? The answer is urban sprawl. Three of the most significant reasons local governments are unable to maintain basic infrastructure are because of zoning and land development regulations, the automobile and accompanying highways, and government subsidizing the single family home. In the first part of the video, they talk about overspending. Now in Tiffany Henyard's case, we're not even talking about just overspending the budget for, you know, let's say overspending in infrastructure, overspending in things like that. Tiffany Henyard has been overspending in her campaign, doing all of the things wrong, which has resulted in a $7 million deficit. As a result, cities from coast to coast have had to tamp down on spending to balance their budgets. Mr. Mayor, hi. Y yes, um, how are you? In New York, Mayor Eric Adams entered 2024 with a $7 billion budget gap, largely attributed to an increase in asylum seekers and migrants arriving in the city. He proceeded with spending cuts dubbed PEG, a program to eliminate the gap. These actions, along with an unexpectedly strong economy, help balance fiscal year 25. But we're not out of the woods. So what the mayor announced was a series of three 5% cuts that add up a little shy of 15%. A lot of those cuts that are being felt very, you know, palpably by New Yorkers. For example, the city comptroller says funding cuts for public education will end some class offerings at the City University of New York while increasing class sizes. Additionally, many libraries in the city are cutting their hours. Also number two, mismanagement. The most recent cost causing concern, Henyard's Taste of Thornton Township last month. WGN Investigates obtained records that show singer Kiki Wyatt was paid $30,000 to sing for 30 minutes. 
Rapper Jay Holiday made 20000 for a half-hour set. When you factor in staff, equipment, and other expenses, the total cost is at least $85,000, which is lower than WGN Investigates initially reported, but still raising questions. Raising questions. Raising questions. Raising questions. So before I get into mismanagement, and we already know what Tiffany Hanyard's reputation is for that. How can she come before the village of Dalton or the people there and actually say that she has a track record in the management department, which she doesn't. She'll probably come out and lie and say something to the effect that, you know what? We have a surplus, which we don't, but we see that a lot of these cities, just like New York city, they have a problem with mismanagement. And at times this is not their own issue. Look at what happens in New York city. Eric Adams inherited the migrant crisis in which a lot of the money were spent with people who are not even U.S. citizens, which even the neglected New York City citizens from getting things like Section 8 housing and things like that. That's just things you can't control. But the things you can control, you're still not doing very well with that. And if you look at Dalton, it's not the place that people largely want to live in. We're going to be honest. A lot of the South suburban suburbs are not just that. And so the thing is you have a decreasing tax base. That means that the little money you do get in taxes, you have to make it count. Now, if you're out there spending all your money on things like Tiffany Henyard and you have an elderly population and a poor population, and you don't have many investors to come into the city to want to grow the economy, how is the city going to take care of itself? Now, I just want to ask you this question. Would you be an investor in a village or a town or city if you came to a town hall meeting and you saw this you would be quiet and listen to what i'm saying you would have heard my statement that i just said we're going to ask for a motion okay well i got a comment now don't take the roll call just because you want to be want to be quiet now no, no, and we no. override you okay okay you're out of order trust me they, they can leave they can leave the answer is most likely hell no there is no absolute chance you would go through that and that's going to be Jason House's dilemma once he wins, and he will win very soundly. His issue will be two things, getting people to want to invest in the city when you have vendors that you can't even pay because of your old mayor's transgressions. So you can't even get the vendors to come out and do the business with you. Maybe you'll get a bailout from the state of Illinois and the governor, but that will be the number one thing. How do you get people to want to move to Dalton, adding to the tax base with creating new businesses and creating new ideas to bring people to Dalton for all the right reasons? And then how do you manage your funds so that you can spend correctly in the city? I actually believe that Jason House passed on being mayor for a, a right reason the first time. And they said he had some personal issues maybe in his life that deterred him from that. But no, Jason House understands being the mayor of Dalton is not savable, okay? Most of the talent, such as like Donovan McNabb, I believe, who was born in Dalton, they don't wanna stay there. Why would you live in Dalton, no offense to Dalton, when a lot of the jobs are somewhere else, Chicago mainly, and other cities around the area in the Midwest that are more promising and are more safe? You don't wanna live in a place in which you feel like you have no hope in. It just doesn't make any sense. But that will be what he's taxed to do. He's going to be tasked to do pretty much a miracle, which I feel kind of bad for the guy because I don't think it's achievable, especially in four years. What Tiffany Henyard has done, and not only her, the other leadership in Dalton and most of those South suburban cities have ruined those places for the last 20 to 30 years. And unfortunately, most of that has been underneath the rule of African-American leadership. It's not only Dalton that has these problems. Most black led cities outside of Atlanta and DC have a shrinking population, especially the ones in the Midwest, Cleveland, Cincinnati, St. Louis, Detroit. Most of those cities were burgeoning at one point. All right. If you look at Atlanta, it might be the only one that doesn't have it or DC and it's because of the nation's capital. But other than that, most of these cities that are ran by African-Americans are not great cities to live, work, and they are not safe. I hate to say it, but if you look at all of them, they're not that good. And you're gonna see extreme levels of corruption, mismanagement, and no people who really want to invest really in those cities to create jobs in better situations for the residents. 
So guys, what do you think? It's your boy Oshie Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. I appreciate you for all that you do. Subscribe to the bell. We're out. <laughs>